Hey guys, it's Tapping with TT, and my special guest today is Q Parker. How are you? I'm well, how are you? Good. What have you been up to? Let's just jump right into it. Let's jump right in. Um, <laughs> living life, enjoying life, uh, running a foundation um, in Atlanta. Uh, still doing some touring and traveling, uh, but just, touring as a group. Well, just as Q Parker. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then just recently released. Uh, a new single. It's called Big. And mm-hmm. so we're out here on the road and going back to what I know in terms of radio and promotions. Get out here on the road. Yeah. And go to every station, shake every hand, kiss every baby. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's been exciting. Are you finding like this to be exciting again? Because obviously, you know, you spent many years on the road as a part of a group 112. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. One of the biggest boy bands of my generation, yeah. I must say. So are you finding this um, to be um, fun again? So um, in 2012 was the first time I did any solo music. Mm-hmm. And during that time, I had to learn a lot about myself because mm-hmm. now I'm no longer in a vehicle with three other drivers. Mm-hmm. I'm in a vehicle by myself mm-hmm. and I have to get myself to the destination. And so that was a real a real learning experience for me. But since then, you know, I've gotten accustomed to it and... I love music, and so anytime I am getting ready to release something new, it is exciting because now, for me, the process starts over each time I release new music, and I'm not just one of those who just want to release it and then put it up on the streaming platforms, and yeah. then that's it. I, I like to do what the way that I was raised in the industry, get out on the road, um, yeah. do all the radio visits, do all the meet and greets, yeah. and all of those things, and so that's the exciting part for me because... I'm a people person. I love the energy of people. So, yeah, this is exciting. Have you found it difficult to transition into the streaming place? Because, like you just stated, you know, you came in a game where you had to have physical CD sales. Yeah. <laughs> the digital streaming thing didn't exist. But I know some seasoned artists like the transition and some, mm-hmm. like, I don't really understand it. I don't. That's not me. So, so, so my my philosophy is a hybrid of the two. Okay. Uh, if you're going to play the current game, you have to be a participant of the of the uh, of the rules and guidelines. But it doesn't mean that you negate the fundamental and the core of who you are. And so, myself and my team, you know, we embrace the the current way that the music industry goes. But we also do some things that you know we all came up into the game, which is why I'm. Here in New York right now, which is why last week we did a, a, a Midwest run. We did, we're doing an up north run now. So it's just the hybrid of the two that I enjoy now. Yeah. Are you doing most of the your own production and writing on yeah. this particular so album? So this, rec- this record, uh, I have an amazing team in Atlanta Black Elvis, uh, Philly the Voice, an incredible songwriter, uh, Jay Bush, Tario, Al Jamal, Anthony. Uh, we just got in the room and, um, just started just to have a conversation, and from the conversation, here came these records. Mm-hmm. Uh, it took about three weeks to record uh, from song number one to song number eight, and uh, here we are. We have a new project, and uh, the lead single is Beg. Yeah. yeah. Have you found your voice, your instrument um, has changed over time? Has it developed? Has it gotten better? Mm-hmm. Like your actual tool? Yeah. So uh, I, I had to fall in love with my instrument. Um, I go back to 2012, as I said, having to just drive the vehicle by myself. There were a lot of things about my instrument that I didn't know, that I haven't really spent a lot of time with. Because when you are in an equally talented group such as 112, Mm -hmm. you only have to master your fourth. Right, your role in the group, right? You feel me? And so my fourth was only 25%. So there there was a reserve 75% that was just sitting over in a corner for years and that's vocally that's creatively that's uh entrepreneurially like Mm -hmm. it was just 75 percent of so much of q parker still left um and so i had to just spend some time with that 75 percent and um i have just fallen in love with myself fallen in love with all that i'm gifted to do and my instrument is it falls right in that folder Uh, i'm in the best vocal shape um I don't have a whole lot of wear and tear on my voice because I've always uh, vocal pedagogy is something that's the top of my um, and vocal maintenance is the top of my list. I'm a health conscious guy. Yeah, uh, I've never smoked, drank, or anything like that. So 
taking really good care of my instrument. And so even as a seasoned artist, um, I feel really good that I can sound just as great as my records. Right. Yeah. You know what's interesting is that you guys came in at a time where boy bands were a thing. Yeah. I feel like it's a lot difficult now to be a boy band. Yeah. You know, um, even when I look at like, you know, Juan Moore, which is a new group that mm -hmm. has affiliation with, you Wanye. know, one of your, mm -hmm. Wanye. I feel like it's it's a lot harder to get people to buy into boy bands yeah. now than it was back then. Because when you guys came out, it was 112. It was Jagged Edge. It was like, oh, my God. Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. but then you guys also came in at a time where it was New Edition. And, you know, y'all came behind new edition behind them, yeah. you know what i mm -hmm. mean so it was like the expectation i, I must must have been really high for you guys as y'all oh, yeah. were coming in well first of all big shout out to you know all of the groups that came before us i um i hosted an event the other day and the special guest was um the temptations and so before i announced them i had it was a temptations review uh -huh. and before i announced them i had to just say hey there's no way that I can even be up here on this stage without just giving props to the legacy of what the Temptations did because they paved the way for not only my group, but every yeah. group darn near that came behind them. Um, but um, to, your, to, to answer your question, I don't think that it's necessarily difficult. I just think that we just have to get back into it. And so shout out to Juan Ye from Boys to Men and his sons um, for having one more and, you know, them being connected to Mary J. Blige, like I think that uh, is something that's amazing. Now I know of some 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 groups that are bubbling, that are yeah. independent, that are starting to get a nice little buzz. buzz. And so um, I think that there's going to be another wave of some male groups. Uh, even Candy Burris has a female group, three mm -hmm. three young ladies. And so I think there's a surge on its way. Uh -huh. uh, I just believe that when you do see them. You know, embrace them. Give them an opportunity to now carry on or continue the legacy of groups that came before them. How do you connect when you're in a group? Like how? Like I often wonder. Like how did you guys connect the way y'all did? I mean, obviously it starts with the music, right? Yeah. First, yeah. But it's just like interesting to see, like you know, now where it's like so much going on, so much artists, mm -hmm. and we're just getting. Every day, it's a new thing. Yeah. What was y'all? What was so magical about that moment, and how y'all were able to connect with your audience? For m my brothers and I, the thing that made us special, we weren't put together. Mm -hmm. We started. We 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 met each other in in middle school. Mm -hmm. So from middle school, years before a record deal, we spent time with each other. We spent the night over each other's houses. You know. Mike's grandmother made food for all of us. My mom, my my parents' house was the, the house where everybody would go have lunch or whatever. And so we just fell in love with each other as brothers way before the music. Mm -hmm. Then the thing that really ultimately united us was our instruments. Mm -hmm. When we came together, it was just something so magical. But it wasn't just because of the gift that we had. We spent time gelling so and becoming brothers. Yes. Yeah. 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 So who decided, like, let's sing? Like, whose idea was it to, like, let's just work together and yeah. sing? <laughs> uh, so I was the last member to join what the world know as 112. Um, but the stories that I heard prior to getting in the group was that Mike was the, uh, was the originator of uh -huh. getting the guys together. Uh, Mike, Deron, and Slim were already a part of the group. They had two other guys that were older that graduated, which then just left the three of them, and they needed a fourth member. And so we sang next to each other in in the um, high school chorus. So every day they're hearing me sing. I'm singing at the assembly programs. Mm -hmm. They're singing at the talent shows. And it was, just, it was just a matter of time before Mike actually asked me to join the group. I said yes, and then a year and a half later we got a record deal, and... Yeah, and the rest is history. Yeah, what's still like one of your favorite one twelve songs to perform? I always so because we wrote a lot of them and created uh -huh. a lot of them. The thing about one twelve, we we are a self contained unit. Yeah, we have a producer in the group, and we're all writers. We all yeah. sing and stuff, and so. But so it's hard for me to say which is my favorite because uh -huh. it's like asking a parent who's your favorite child. <laughs> 
And so I always answer that question from a favorite standpoint. Yeah. Not not a favorite, I mean a special. Oh, okay. a, from a special okay. standpoint. Fair enough. And the most special to me is Only You, oh, okay. which is the very first one because it featured Notorious B.I.G. Yeah. Then the remixes in Times Square yeah. with Mace, Total, Puff. That was a good time. Like, it's just, it's just, and that was the very first record that the world was introduced to 112. And so I like to answer that from a special, like that's the most special song to me. Yeah. Yeah. So if there was a, you know, series done, a documentary done on 112, kind of how New Edition, you know, their biopic um, was, which was incredible on BT, mm-hmm. by the way. What what would we take from that? If something was to be created about 112 and years to come, what would be that, thing that we would walk away like damn i think that is there are components of all male groups that are similar Mm -hmm. um you would definitely see love for sure Mm -hmm. brotherhood uh disagreements Mm -hmm. not always getting along um, but figuring out a way to still make it work um and so ultimately i think the end game would be Obviously, a reunion of sorts, mm-hmm. uh, a coming back together, a reestablishing the brotherhood. And then from there, who knows what other parts of the 112 legacy and story uh, is to be told. And I think that's the reason why there has yet to even be any type of thing like that done on the group. is because we feel like we still have so much more to do before um, a total story of the brand can be told. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How's the relationship with you guys now? Have y'all? Mm-hmm. So the rela- the relationship, you know, everyone has an opportunity now to just explore their individuality. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I personally am just in a Q Parker season. You know, I've had 25, almost 30 years of participation with the legacy, but there's so much more that I have to, I needed to do for myself mm-hmm. uh, that may not have, that could have, conflicted time wise commitment wise yeah. uh, to a ever so demanding brand yeah because um, you guys were on a roll yeah a yeah 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 and yeah. so there just comes a point in time where you know a decision had to have been made for the goals and the dreams and the visions and the creativity that q parker as an individual have and so i'm just enjoying this season um yeah. who I, I i leave room for a reunion you know mm-hmm when the time permits. Um, but until then, I'm just excited that I give to, I get to give the world now a full 100% of Q Parker. And yeah. it's, it's so exciting. Cause I want to ask you like, what do you vision for Q Parker? You know, mm-hmm. what can we expect in this, in this album? What stories are you telling? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's so funny because when you ask the question, like an immediate smile comes on my face mm-hmm. because I'm really excited about, uh, what we were able to do. So when, when I start with the first single, um, it's, it's called Beg, right? Mm-hmm. And we were, we are redefining the definition of the word. It's not more so of what it what the word used to mean, you know, when you did something wrong or, you know, you're begging for some immediate result. <laughs> you begging for forgiveness? Yeah. <laughs> however, we came up with a new acronym. It's Bringing Endless Gratitude. Mm-hmm. Because I feel like if you are begging consistently, then your relationship is going to benefit from it. Mm-hmm. And it's not just something that men should do. Women can beg too. Yeah. So we, I'm, this song is encouraging everybody to just do great deeds, you yeah. know, have actions that are, um, that are thoughtful, that are done with love, that are caring, yeah. that is uh, sacrificial in some instances, um, all of those things. And so, you know, this, this, this begging movement is just that. And hopefully that this song will um, usher in a whole new mindset for people that are in relationships. Or even when you get in a relationship, have a consistent begging mentality because if you do that, whatever it is you want, it'll stay at the ready position. Yeah. How were you able, how were you able to nourish your relationships? Um, I see you have a band on Mm -hmm. your hand. Yes. So um, I'm assuming you're married, obviously, right? How were you, how were you able to be present in a relationship, particularly a marriage and do all the things that, 
that it took to to flourish that marriage and be in all of this because mm-hmm. y'all started so young and y'all had so much fame you had so much women and just like i can't imagine y'all yeah. all look good as hell so yeah. i can't Thank imagine you. what it took to like really foster that type of relationship well the first thing is um I have to give a, a special shout out to my wife, Charlinda Parker. Uh, mm-hmm. We we just celebrated 22 years this past August, wow. and uh, it takes a very strong woman to be uh, married to a person of influence or a person that's in the limelight. And you're right, we did get married young, but I believe that you know love is a powerful thing when you uh, ignite it in the right way. Mm-hmm. And so being married young, we're not void of the peaks and valleys. We've had our high moments we've had our rough moments but i believe that the greatest thing about uh, the two of us is through it all we kept the main thing the main thing and that's our love that's our commitment to one another that's our family um and and we're now reaping the benefits of that commitment and that prioritizing each other regardless of what the priorities were for my job making sure that family maintained its level of priority. And here we are celebrating 22 years this past August. Can it still happen? Because I see on TikTok a lot of the, the, you know, Gen Zers, they have a different perspective on marriage, right? Some really don't believe that a 22-year marriage can still exist Mm -hmm. in 2024, which kind of makes me sad. You know, I consider myself... Still kind of in a newlywed phase. Uh, I just made six years in August. Congratulations. Even though I've, you know, been with him longer than that off mm-hmm. and on and whatnot. But I still fundamentally believe that although there's a lot of distractions with social media and stuff like that, that that can happen in black families. Mm-hmm. Like, it can happen. But there has to be, like you said, that level of foundation. Yeah. I think the main thing has to always stay the main thing. Mm -hmm. regardless like don't go for the pump fakes as we say don't get caught in the smoke in the mirrors like stay grounded stay grounded and stay centered centrally focused on what's the the main thing and again you know you can go out and get the the quick fame and the instant gratification and all those things but at the end of the day the foundation is where your foundation is and again as long as you keep that um at the forefront, I think you'll be okay. Irregardless of what society has now deemed the standard or whatever, you have the opportunity to to write your own story. Yeah. Re- regardless. Every day, every every day, day you, you get wake a new, up. You exactly. get a new beginning. Yeah. Absolutely. What inspires you now, your creativity? What When you get in a studio, what are you inspired by to create? I'm a lover of life. Yeah. Um, and... I'm a relational guy. You know, mm, I am. That's so important, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I just started taking um, relationship therapy. Mm-hmm. Um, it's called RT, uh, RLT, Relational relational Life Therapy, because I realized that I was one of those people that struggled to be in relations mm. with people, right? So, that's a, so the fact yeah. that you mentioned that is a great thing to have because oftentimes people don't know how to be in relations with others just don't so i'm a relational guy and i'm a people lover yeah and um i like to say that i'm an r&b song with legs arms and all (laughs) like like i'm I'm the epitome of an r&b song yeah everything about my characteristics my traits and everything is like a verse a hook a melody ad libs yeah. melodic harmonies like i'm just an r&b guy and so because of that my creative my creativity just takes me so many places i know what men men want to hear from their women because i've been married for so long but i also know what women want to hear from men and so yeah. i can now go in the studio based off of my own relationships based off of things that i've had conversations that i've had with Opposite, both sexes, mm-hmm. um, and I just put all of that into uh, into into on, on, onto the song, and I believe that the best way to get people to really feel where you're coming from is when you're singing from a real place. Yeah. And even if I haven't experienced it myself, I've had a conversation with you, TT, and we talked about yeah. blah 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 blah. So now 
I got real data that I can now go and put into <laughs> and go the into song. The booth, right? Right. So yeah. and, and it translates so well. And so when you think about the history of even the one twelve catalog, because yeah. I was a writer on a lot of those records and now transitioning into and going into uh, my twenty twelve album and now this album, it's all relatable stuff. Yeah. Has younger <laughs> artists, particularly those, you know, coming from Atlanta, have they called you up to work in the studio? Like, I need a hook, I need a verse, I need that sometimes, sauce. <laughs> some, some, sometimes um, it's funny because, like, the, the, the young artists, they'll now call me OG. Yeah. You know, sometimes, like, I've gotten the unk. Yeah. <laughs> Unk is not a, Yo, such a bad thing. You I, know, was like called, a cool I was called Unk the other day. I was like, <laughs> I mean, I'll take it. Um, but, I mean, it's just out of respect. But um, anytime I have an opportunity to uh, shine wisdom, uh, give yeah. some of my experiences, my knowledge to the next generation, I'm all for that. Yeah. Because you, you know, what creatively, you can lend a lot of good A&R advice. And, mm -hmm. you know, I love what Jermaine Dupree has done in terms of, like, with Money Long and, like, all of these new R&B artists getting involved. Because y you guys' ear and your pin game and what you've contributed to the culture, just it, arranging records mm -hmm. and uh, understanding melodies and how to put it together, can, yeah. they can really benefit from, like, a seasoned artist taking them into the studio and really helping them put together a body of work. Absolutely. Because what I've noticed with a, a lot of um, artists coming up now is so quick, you know, that they forget the nuances and the the catalog quality music mm -hmm. that sustains the you know 20 25 years mm -hmm. when you're not so hot when you you know you need your catalog to kind of sustain you when that one hit wears off yeah. you know what i mean so that's why i think like artists like you and and, and Jermaine and can really help yeah. with that big shout out to you know what Jermaine does uh and and i'm always available and open to the artists of today uh, if they are wanting guidance, mentorship, and all of those things. However, my approach primarily comes through my foundation. I have a foundation in Atlanta, Q Parker Legacy Foundation, and once one part, one tier of the foundation is focused on the youth, mm -hmm. the next generation that aspires to be into, enter into the industry, and just giving them the tools so that they can properly navigate them th themselves through oh, a, an industry of independence, you know, making sure that they not only are developed creative, creatively and nurturing their voice and their instrument and their talent, but also educating them so that they're understanding the business side of the entertainment industry. Because at some point, my generation, we probably will fade to the left, right? Or we can go as long as we want to. But there's another generation that are, uh, that are super talented. They love it. They want to be in it. And I just say that on my watch, I want to make sure I can pass a healthy baton to the next generation. I don't want to give them a worn out baton or one that's faded or half broken or half working. I want to give them a healthy baton so that now they can grab it with confidence, enter into this game know how to navigate themselves as an artist, as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, as all of those things. And so that that has become um, one of my focuses. Your purpose, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Your instrument, your, your gift has now turned into a purpose. Absolutely. Where not only do you use your legacy, but you build the next generation. That's your legacy for the next generation. Absolutely. So when Q Parker is ready to retire and it's all said and done, you have planted those seeds to carry on. Absolutely. That's a beautiful That's thing. That's the goal. Well, yeah. Awesome. Well, when does the album come out? So right now, the the single is available. It's, it's called Beg. It's available on all the platforms. Wherever you get your music from, it is available. Um, but the, rec the album won't come out until 25. You know, okay. I still believe in the generation of, of delivering music that I was brought up in. Right. Release a record. Let it simmer, slow cook it, you yeah. know, let people really fall in love with it, then come with another one, and then maybe release the, the record. So we're, we're looking at a top 25 type of album release. Awesome. Well, you must come back again. 
I want to say thank you so much for stopping by today and just chatting with me. I really enjoyed this interview. Thank you for your time. As a fan, you know, when y'all was coming in the game, I wasn't in radio just yet. I was a little bit, little bit too young. But I always had the OGs. Like, I would be in the studio and y'all would come by and do y'all radio interviews mm-hmm. and stuff like that. I will still kind of be in high school, college, dancing to it wow. and vibing with it. <laughs> so, be, so to be able to sit in this seat and have a conversation with you today it's it's just an honor because like i grew up you know what i mean what listening watching the videos you know recording the songs writing the lyrics you know That's heartbreaks crying you know what i'm saying you up. know with the posters which one you like more <laughs> yes that's what's up yo i mean to be in this in this seat not literally but just in the space uh and be considered you know, a legend, the OG, yeah. you know, coming up on 30 years, being in the game. I don't take that lightly. Yeah. I, I cherish, I cherish this, this level. But again, for me, my focus is uh, maintaining a level of excellence, um, carrying the 112 brand where, wherever I go, because regardless of what I do as an individual, I'm still connected to the legacy and the brand of 112. I represent it all the time. Yeah. Um, but then also just making sure, as I stated earlier, this next generation is in a healthy place so that they can enter into it in yeah. a good in a good standing. Yeah. And I think it's it's nothing wrong with living in that legend space, you know, because when we think about our legends, for me on my side that have passed away recently from Fat Man Scoop to Mr. C, to DJ K Slay, yeah, yeah. I would do anything to hug them again. Yeah. You know what I mean? To tell them how great of a legends they they are. They Flowers, were, still yeah, are, and yeah. paved the way for me to be on this stage and have this microphone because, you know, so many of our legends are no longer here Thanks. to be able to have these conversations with. So, you know, I do appreciate you for stopping by and I wish this project the best. Thank you. And when the album comes back, comes out, you have to come back. I sure will. All right. Yes. It's Tapping with TT, everybody. It's Q Parker, my special guest today. Thank you so much for tuning in.